Greetings everyone, my name is Anthiar and welcome back to XCOM Enemy Within Long War. This is Classic Iron Man, today we have an alien abduction to go take care of in Russia. Alright, let's go ahead and get on into our squad selection. It's a pretty easy one this time. We've gone into April so we're expecting other alien types. We've got uh, Seekers, floaters, thin men that all could be popping up in regular missions now. So we're taking less rookies. Um, we're going to go to 4 2 this time. So we have a scout and assault with our shotguns and flashbangs. Their job is going to be to draw overwatch and get close. Infantry provided a base of fire along with our specialist gunner. Now it's urban close quarters, so I didn't go with the LMG since you can get limited by uh, sight lines and you can't fire after you move. So that's uh, the main reason why I decided not to go with the longer range machine gun on this one. And we do have two rookies that we're going to try to get uh, trained up and ready to go for the more difficult missions later. So we do have one HE to try to blow some cover if we need to. Got uh, three flashbangs, one AP, and a medkit. And again, with the exception of the infantry is packing ceramic plates so they can uh, hopefully not get killed quite so fast as they might otherwise. So let's get on this mission. Mission site setting down. We'll be deploying to Russia for this one. Panic is spreading throughout a major city as the aliens move through the streets. We have to get a handle on this situation. Okay. So we have the Operation Enduring Sleep. This is the well, I call it the kind of the fast food map. It's a single building. Um, it's a really tight map. There's a lot of stuff going on, um, and it's really easy, especially later when you've got like uh, heavy and swarmy missions to get kind of caught up in the uh, in getting way too many guys activated. So hopefully we can avoid that. Um, we should be able to do all right though, since it's only a light. There's only gonna be about three pods to worry about. Roger, Big Sky. Reading you 5x5. Five five. Strike 1 has the green light for deployment. Alright, so... Giving a quick look-see here. We're, uh, in a pretty stable area. It's, uh, got a lot of sight lines. It's kind of unfortunate, but also fortunate. Um, since, uh, we can kind of plan out what we want to do, we have a lot of options. Our main issue is that we don't want to go straight up the middle and risk activating tons of pods at the same time. So we're probably going to go right to make use of this car. Um, and that's just because that's going to give us the best options for uh, kind of sleeping around and uh, potentially even getting on the roof. Is there a... no, okay, if there was a... if there was a pipe here that I could climb up, I might have gone left, but uh, there's not. And uh, before we get started, um, I seem to be having some encoding issues on the player, so I'm going to try to see if I can get that figured out um, before continuing on here, so give me a moment. Okay, and we're back again. It looks like I just needed to fool with my bitrate a little bit. Uh, it was having trouble keeping up when I was panning around and talking and everything at the same time. So hopefully that's uh, resolved. Anyways, back to what we were talking about before. Um, we're probably going to use this car and push around. Um, you got a pipe you can just make out over here. It'll allow us to get onto the roof if we can uh, secure it before making tons of contact. But there's nothing for it but to get to it. So let's go. Copy that. Heading there now. Moving 
into position. Saul. Les voilà. If I had to hazard a guess, oh. based on and this profile, and I'd say right the aliens bat, developed so this unit we're with the intention of tracking and isolating things. single targets. It appears to have a sophisticated evasion system as well. Perhaps we should try to avoid those tentacles. Heading to that location. So the Seekers are going to try to sneak up and strangle people, so we're going to need to overwatch a lot to hopefully uh, prevent that from happening. Also, I'm trying not to get too tight on my stacking, because that Thin Man's going to spit acid if we give the chance to disable a lot of soldiers. Um, unfortunately, there's not tons of cover to use, so that might be a little bit unavoidable. Rolling. Also, our scout's a bit strung out here. You're really likely to get flanked if I don't uh, if I don't move to another location. So we're gonna just pop around this corner to make sure we keep some cover from that thin man. Je suis en route. And everybody else is going to Overwatch. Yes. And all the overwatch goes off at once, but we kept him from getting strangled. Now unfortunately that means the second one, if it pops out, is just going to jack us all up. But it didn't. Unfortunately our scout's kind of out of action now for a little while, that is going to make them super un inaccurate and every time they take an action that's not hunker down they're basically taking damage and we don't like that I could try to run and gun forward to take this uh, this thin man but I really risk activating more pods and having my uh, my assault strung out there as well so I'm not sure if that's an option I even want to really consider up is kind of bait um, while we get everybody else into position. It's only a 40% with the infantry, that's not really great. If we can overwatch enough, we might be able to prevent him from running around uh, the corner uh, to flank that rookie. So we're going to have to kind of take our chances with that, I think. Mainly I'm trying to free up space so I can get other people moving. Move into position. I managed to get my scout some acid damage because I forgot to hunker first. Dumb! And secret number two! Shotgun's coming in handy. That is not good. Alright, the cloud cleared, so now I can move people into those spaces. However, I'm still kind of, uh can't really move the trooper herself. So, I risk activating another pod, but I can always fall back, so we're gonna see if we can't get a flank on this thin man. On my way. And we can indeed. Only three damage though. Need a resupply. That's about as bad as damage you can get on the assault rifle. I can always overwatch with my second action, so I might as well take the 40%. And that paid off. 
now that all the pod the pod is fully down, we're green to go. Just reload actions and uh, start getting ourselves Rock set up for moving forward at this point. I'm ready. Thought about moving forward to the building. I just really don't want to take any chances. I don't want to uh, reveal anything when I'm not ready for it at this point. <laughs> So our scout no longer has uh, acid. This battle fatigue, it, this is kind of annoying. Um, it says suffered combat wounds, weakened its will, aim, and mobility. I think that's something that they just couldn't get rid of in Long War because it's only been armor damage. They actually haven't gotten hurt yet. So that's a little frustrating, but you know, you just kind of have to deal with it. Je suis en route. Quelque chose ici. Floaters. So we're not going to be doing a lot of rooftop action right now. <laughs> Just can't get there. Have the scout fall back to high cover. Okay. Reloaded. That's affirmative. We have everybody kind of set up uh, with about as good as cover as we can expect. The only person not in high cover is our rookie that's kind of standing in the back here a little bit. Um, now we're going to basically play for them to come up. Floaters love Overwatch, and they're also usually pretty scared of Overwatch, so hopefully uh, when I go on Overwatch it'll keep them from trying to circle around too much, but uh, we could get into a stalemate pretty easily, so I'll have to be careful about that. Got it. Flying bonus is killing me. Target still up. And their launch ability, which lets them relocate pretty much anywhere they could ever want. Watch the sides. Watch the play. So I have one floater flying that's in a a position that can really kind of easily flank me out. And then I have a second one that's already in a flanking position. So I have my scout run across, pull that lightning reflexes uh, magic to draw the overwatch fire. It's, uh, it's like a minus 90 for the first one and minus 70 for all subsequent uh, overwatches that it runs. So she should be okay there, and hopefully that'll let her take out that nearby floater and let the rest of the squad kind of turn around to focus on the one that's jumped in behind us. Je suis sous le feu ennemi. Ninety-two. Dead floater. Now. Could take two shots of forty five. Also try to run and gun to this covered position here. It leaves me in half cover for the other floater, who won't be able to actually see me until he moves. Um, but the shotgun might get a pretty good uh, angle there, so I think we're gonna have to go ahead and give that one a shot. Going in for the kill. Double time. Yeah, 100%. I'd call that a pretty good chance. Solid copy. So let's be 
move my infantry up to start Overwatch, trying to keep that last floater back there stuck in its position. I'll move Rookie up as well. And we'll leave this last Rookie in position. That's oh, Overwatch. Overwatch and just to knock him out of the sky. All right, so that's two pods dealt with. There's probably only one more, and based upon how we've seen them, they're probably sitting right back here. Um, so I think we're gonna push up to this corner, and if we haven't made contact, we'll hit the roof. If we have made contact, we'll have to deal with it, obviously. But we'll kind of uh, see if we get any sight on them here. Affirmative. Voilà ce qu'on cherchait. There's some meld though. I always like opening doors just because you can get through them without alerting people if you need to. Aye, aye, Commander. Use this rookie as kind of a backstop with Overwatch. Moving to designated coordinates. Everybody's going to dash up and take position for climbing onto the roof. Got it. Move it. Might not be a great spot for me now. The floaters just pop right up and uh, do bad things. So we're gonna have to uh, come up with some other ideas here. I think I can move my scout in. Pulls out lightning reflexes, four percent. So that was nice and uh, nice and easy. The number that shows up down here is uh, I don't know. It's like it's actually a decimal or something. So it said forty-two. So it's actually like a four point two. Um, but the lightning reflexes it showed up on the uh, thing up there, and that was that was closer to what it's supposed to be. Aye, aye, Commander. Forty-one's not horrible. Heading to that location. Fifty-two, I'll take. I think. Let's move everybody else first. I probably. Oh, let's see. Don't remember where the rest of them actually are. We're gonna go ahead and flashbang the one though, just one less thing I have to worry about quite as much. This leaves me with a fair bit of uh, overwatch that I can take, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the shot with my rookie over here, the 52. Oh, nice. Shot failed to connect. And everybody else is gonna overwatch. See, I can't see that guy, so I'm not quite sure how he's shooting at me. Overwatch managed to handle the flashbang floater. And there's at least one more who's probably on Overwatch as well. So if I'm going to do anything, it's going to need to be with a scout. And there's a little tiny bit of fire from when 
they started that suppression attack that's blocking that doorway, so my scout if is, uh, well, let's pull this blue move here first. I briefly saw him. <laughs> briefly, briefly. The assault. Reloaded. Reload the infantry. And, well, half cover, I guess, is half cover. That's affirmative. And then we're just gonna do a bunch of overwatching again. Ow, 29%, really? And my cover just evaporated on my uh, assault there. All right, so these floaters are exploiting a flying unit bug, apparently. Uh, I've experienced this a lot in the past, and it's super frustrating that they can see me, but I don't have return line of sight on them. And as I understand the game, with, with the exception of squad sight, that's not supposed to be possible. And so what we're probably going to have to do is fall back and uh, try to draw them into us. Um, because they're just uh, going to sit there and just keep plugging away at me without my ability to reply at all. Leave my assault in a position where you might be able to dash out. Issue is, I think that they'll be able to see my infantry from here as well. But let's just do our overwatches and see what comes of it. And sure enough, he had to come down to the ground. And then he tries to run away. I'm on it, Commander. Okay. Let's rock. Okay. Solid copy. Not having visibility makes me really itchy. So we've all fallen back to positions. It's all half cover, with the exception of our two front people, which I'm hoping doesn't come, to, come back to bite me. He could be flying over the top here. fact, I'm going to rotate my assault and my scout. I'm going to get my scout to run up onto the roof, I think. There's some covered positions up there I think I can use Moving out. to uh, see if he's coming over the top at me, but other than that, we just kind of have to try to hold in here and overwatch. Himself into a flanked position, so uh, let's see if we can't get rookies into positions they might be able to get some kills. Uh, let's see here. The thing is, I don't think her carving is going to uh, do the trick, but uh, I don't think it's going to do enough damage. But give it a shot anyway. Oh, hey, look at that! Excellent work. All objectives complete. 
So we managed to get out of that without any injuries. Uh, our gunner took a hit that ripped off his armor, but uh, didn't actually get to his health. So we're going to go ahead and uh, call Operation Enduring Sleep a pretty, pretty good success. Vladivostok is going to be a little safer than it was. And we'll get ourselves back to base and see what we managed to pull out of this situation. work, Commander. I'm impressed you were able to recover so much of the melt substance without any casualties. Well, unfortunately, PFC Sunkuli did not manage to get a kill and thus did not get promoted. Um, that's unfortunate because it means that I have to take him as a rookie again <laughs> to get them promoted at a later date. But we did manage to get four promotions. Um, we have four specialists that will be uh, Lance Corporals and one private who is about to she thinks she wants to be a infantry or an assault, but we'll have to look at that later to see if that's actually what we're going to let her do. For our gunner, um, flush is just a great ability, uh, and so I pretty much uh, go with that. I usually have hollow targeting on my scouts, and so I'm, I'm not as fussed with hollow targeting for the gunners. Um, but you can uh, do some pretty nasty things to robotic enemies with flush and heat, heat ammo. Um, and I don't need to worry about cover fire and opportunist since if you're suppressing and they run, you get an opportunist overwatch at them anyway. It gives you a no penalty overwatch uh, when they try to run out of the suppression. Um, and then my infantry kind of handle the uh, overwatch specialist roles. So um, we're going to go with flush and then eventually to heat ammo so that they can do horrible, horrible things to robotic uh, enemies. <laughs> Infantry, just as before, covering fire. Making them those mean Overwatch people that just kill anything that tries to come at them. For assault, since so I take flush on my gunners, I don't typically worry about it on assaults. I'd much rather have close combat specialists. This ability is just probably one of my favorite abilities, uh, especially when you start getting into like, the Chrysalid packs and Terra missions. If you have enough ammo, you can just get shots at all of them as they try to run in, and uh, frequently can be lifesavers. It also uh, procs on decloaking uh, Seekers, or Sentinels, Seekers, Seekers, um, which makes it just too useful not to take, really. Um, steadfast, you get the 5 will, which can be great for some classes, but uh, you're never going to panic as a result of getting wounded, allies panicking, um, allies getting wounded or killed, or intimidation, which is great. You can still get side panicked though, so that's the downside. Alright, so picking up floater corpses, another thin man corpse, smilarium, alloys, we're firing seeker rex, starting to expand our repertoire. Got three meld, which basically means I got no canisters, um, I just picked it up off of corpses somehow. Remember, we will be watching. Alright, so situation room. Looking pretty good. We knocked uh, Rush's panic down a bit, which is nice. Um, things looking pretty solid there. In the hangar. Gotta love that. Two more interceptors showing up. Everybody else is ready, so North America should be pretty secure. Uh, From what little I've seen of their technology. If the aliens were intent on conquering Earth, there's not much we could do to stop them. I'm guessing they have something else in mind. It's got 14 days on the thermal generator. I'm going to go ahead and excavate this last upper location here. Can't actually build any structures for two weeks until that thermal generator gets done. I have zero available power. But uh, Lyrium alloys and Mel, those are starting to tick up rather nicely. I, I can't really argue against that too much. Um, makes me pretty happy to see. That hulk of flesh and metal troubles me. What do we risk with our own investigations into the melding of human and machine? Will we see a line in the sand and refuse to cross it? Or will we move forward, willing to sacrifice everything for the sake of total victory? I have to believe that is not our future. Provided, of course, that the alien's technology remains in the right hands. All right. So, nothing new to build. Research is just about done, and so we're going to go ahead and scan forward and basically let that happen. 
Or get a scout to show up. We're in pursuit. Risky let him try to stick around for that last shot, but uh, managed to do quite a bit of damage. Contact We're gonna have to finish him off with uh, our with swordsman here. So I'd really be sad if he ended up getting hit here. It's only gonna take one hit to finish a guy off. Enemy is padlocked. Shot it down, so we're gonna have another scout to go attack. Um, hangar wise, it's a really good thing these interceptors are showing up tomorrow, because um, now we're out for five days and 17 days. Uh, which, five days isn't too bad, but uh, sometimes you'll just be seeing UFOs <laughs> like every couple hours, it feels like, so we need to, we need to not be taking the extra damage. If Seversky could have knocked that UFO out there. That 17 would have been so bad because I wouldn't have to send up the second interceptor, but, you know, we just got to deal with what we have in front of us. But I'll leave it here for now since we're prepping for another mission. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, found it entertaining and or informative and or learning experience or just hilarious as I'm an idiot and that's always a possibility as well. Um, and I hope you'll return for this... Uh, Assault on a crash scout, but until then, take care.